Hi, I'm Kristen Abatello Neff and welcome to Equestrian Nation. Today I'm going to show you a variety of bits, bridles, and equipment that are commonly used for riding. We're going to start today with a bitless bridle. This is what we call an English hackamore. It has nothing in the horse's mouth and you use it to control the horse by pressure on the nose and off the top of the bridle on the pole. This is called a hack a bit. It's much more severe than any of these bridles. It has both a bit and it works off nose and pole pressure. The most commonly used schooling bit is a loose ring snaffle. They come in a lot of varieties. They're very flexible. It's jointed in the middle and great for keeping a horse's mouth soft. This is called a Dr. Bristol. It's a loose ring with a joint in between. The more joints that you have in your bit, the softer it is on your horse's mouth. This is a loose ring with a twist in it. It also has bit guards to keep it from pinching your horse's lips while riding. Next we have a three ring, which is in the loose ring family, but it has three circles for leverage. So you can hook reins to any of these circles to create more leverage. This three ring has what we call a happy mouth mouthpiece. It's very light plastic and, and weighs far less than a metal bit in your horse's mouth. So this is great for a horse that's very light to ride. Next in the snaffle family, we have a D bit. It's a little less flexible than a loose ring, but more appropriate for the show ring. This is an example of a D-bit with a copper mouthpiece that helps the horse salivate and soften its mouth. Another common snaffle is a full cheek snaffle. This is a pony size full cheek. It's fixed on the side so it doesn't have the same flexibility as the loose ring, but the long wings help with turning your horse and directing them. This is a full cheek with a Waterford mouthpiece. It's constantly moving in the horse's mouth, so it doesn't allow the horse to clamp or pull on the bit. This is a copper full cheek Dr. Bristol, which has the two joints. It's made of copper, so again, lots of flexibility, encourages the horse to be soft in the mouth, and has the long full cheek sides to help with steering and direction. This is called a full cheek twisted wire, which has a severe mouthpiece. The thinner the mouthpiece, the more severe and strong it is on the horse. It's a double twisted wire for extra strength. And again, it has the full cheek to help steer and give direction. This is what we call a full cheek gag. So it's the common full cheek with a second rein that runs on a rope that when you add pressure to the rein, it lifts the bit in the horse's mouth, creating more pressure and um, helping you elevate your horse. This is a full cheek elevator, which again has one rein on the snaffle and a second rein on the bottom of the full cheek, causing the pressure to turn the bit in the horse's mouth and elevate the bit for leverage. Now we're moving into the Pelham family of bits. The Pelham has a shank. They can be different sizes. The longer the shank, the more severe the leverage is. Pelham bits are all leverage bits and we're gonna go through from least severe to most severe. This Pelham has two joints in the center of it, keeping it soft and flexible in the horse's mouth, but having the two reins allows you to lift and have leverage from the rider. This pelham has one joint in it. We call it a happy mouth pelham because it's the lightweight plastic in the horse's mouth. So this would be used on a large horse that might be a little heavy on the forehand, but not necessarily hard in the mouth. This jointed pelham is what we call a rubber pelham. It's metal coated with rubber, just for horses that are a little sensitive to metal, um, but it's heavier weighted in the horse's mouth, so it gives you slightly more power. Then we move on to the straight bar pelhams. If the bit is straight and not jointed, it's more severe. It doesn't curve with the horse's mouth and it allows you to help lift the front end of the horse's body up. This is a happy mouth straight bar pelham. 
The last and most severe pelham we have is the steel straight bar pelham. It has a five inch shank on it for extreme leverage. It's thin and steel in the middle which gives you a lot of stopping power. To go along with your bridles, most horses wear martingales. We've got your typical standing martingale here, which attaches to the girth in between the horse's front legs and to the nose band of the bridle. A martingale gives your horse a boundary of how far out they can stretch their neck or how high they can carry their neck. It also puts pressure on the nose band when the horse pulls, alleviating some of the pressure in the, horse's, in the rider's hands. As riders and horses get more advanced and start jumping higher jumps, you would graduate to a running martingale. It's only seen in the jumper ring. It attaches to the girth between the horse's front legs and then splits into two rings that go through the reins. This also gives the horse a guideline for their bascule over the jump, yet it gives them much more freedom. In addition to your bridle, you will need a saddle to ride in. We've got three different saddles here. Um, each saddle needs to be fitted not only to the rider, but to the horse. This is a custom-made saddle that's built for a wide-bodied horse. The second saddle is a pony saddle made for children. We do have a little strap on the front to hold on to for riders that are learning to ride. It also shows the peacock safety stirrups that have elastic bands on them so that if the rider is unbalanced or has fallen that it'll break away and free the rider. The third saddle we have here is a jumping saddle found in the hunt seat and equitation ring. It has a flat seat designed to help the rider balance from sitting to standing position to prepare for a jump. This saddle has an extra long flap for a rider with a long leg. You'll see it very commonly in the jumper arena. We also show a leather girth has elastic on one side, leather on the other. The elastic attaches to the left side of your horse so that you can tighten it before mounting. And now, with all your equipment, you are ready to tack up and safe to ride.